Internships provide high school and college students with the opportunity to further explore their career interests. These experiences can confirm their passions, but they can also help students discover new interests. The award-winning Los Angeles Valley College Cooperative Education Program provides high school and college students with the opportunity to earn college credit while participating in an internship. The program's one-stop design is a win-win for students and employers. Well, I think one of the reasons it's important is that there's been an emphasis, especially in recent years, about how important community colleges are for transfer populations. But the reality is that 50% of the mission of the California community colleges is uh, to do workforce education and workforce preparation. And it's not just about coming and taking the theory-based classes. It's also about helping students translate what those theories are into what their everyday work life is going to be once they complete their program. So what better way to do that than to have co-op ed? And with co-op education courses, a student has the opportunity to get real work-based learning information and work-based learning experience in any number of hours. So if they only have time in their schedule for one credit of hours, well then that's the amount of, of experience they get. But if they are fortunate enough to have enough financial wherewithal that they can actually do four units and that's more hours, how much better they will be once they actually enter the workforce in their chosen field with co-op ed. At one of my previous institutions, when I had a large number of career technical programs, they did, each department had a cooperative education opportunity. So they had, they, a student could sign up for the number of hours and they could do this type of activity. The difference though is that it wasn't a structured program. So in that case, who, whichever faculty member in that department wanted to be responsible for, for those uh, work-based opportunities, they could sign up, but they weren't engaged with the community the same way. So they, the student would often be the one who come, would come and say, well, this is where I think I wanna do these hours. And the faculty member would say, okay, and then because of changes in Title V, they wouldn't even have to go and visit the site. They could do all of it by just communicating with the employer, by phone, checking in with the student, giving the student some um, assignments and saying, you know, well, tell us how you're doing this, but that wasn't a real experience. When you have somebody like Dr. Doug Marriott, who is out there, he knows the business community, he knows what their needs are, it's a different experience. I think the other piece of it is that we do a great job of teaching content information here, and that's key to students being successful in terms of um, doing any particular job. But what we do is we go the extra mile and we give them real soft skills, which is what employers are always talking about in advisory committee meetings. And when I interact with them in the business community, and I serve on the Valley Industry and Commerce Association board, I chair the education committee of that, and I'm also on the Valley Economic Alliance. So I interact all the time with the business community. And what do they say our students need? Soft skills. They need good customer service skills. They need to show up ready to be professional in an interview. They need to know what it means to get to work on time. Our students through our co-op ed program get that. So they get the theory-based learning, they get to put it into action in these programs and in these um, placements. But along the way, I have a fabulous group of people who are saying, okay, now let's talk about how you're gonna interview. Now let's talk about how you're going to be professional in a workplace. So I think that's the difference, but it's a philosophical difference. And some colleges just, that's not their philosophy, but it's definitely ours. Cooperative education is a program that allows students to earn academic credit for structured work experience. It works for unpaid internships, structured volunteerism with the 501c3, or with paid employment. Uh, approximately 70% of our student population works in some capacity. It's available to all working, interning, or volunteering students. Um, 
it adds a component which is real world practical education with our academic work here at the college. Um, in terms of career and technical education, career and technical education majors can receive career and technical education elective credits for their work experience if it's related to their major. So an engineering student that is at an architectural firm learning engineering skill sets can earn engineering elective credit. A child development uh, intern like we have with the Family Resource Center can earn child development units. Um, other students, if it's a general work experience, get general elective credits. They're CSU transferable credits, so they allow students to, for many students, it helps them maintain full-time student status while they're working towards their academic and career goals. For a college to set this up, they would need the support of their administration and their career and technical education dean. There are specific requirements in Title V about how it's supposed to look. Um, we look to that language and educational code when we establish the protocols and practices of our program. So it includes a one-on-one -on -one <clears throat> meeting with the student to ensure that the learning objectives are both measurable and relevant to their work experience and that they understand how the course works. Uh, it requires a signed agreement with the employer that the employer will serve as a mentor and help the student learn in the workplace. Um, what we do here at Los Angeles Valley College is actually visit the work site to ensure that the objectives are being met. Uh, there is an educational requirement that involves seminars and the seminar content It helps students think about their work as a place uh, of gaining transferable skills to advance. Yeah, the seminar piece is, is actually a, 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 the academic component that gives um, a, a little more substance and, and content uh, to the program where we deal with job training skills, we deal with interviewing skills, uh, opportunities in the workplace, doing various kinds of motivational assessments and to, to look at the student uh, in a different context and hopefully give them, uh, you know, these transferable skills that Doug talks about. Uh, again, to make it more relevant. Uh, it's not a theoretical concept, it's not an academic concept to the point of, well, according to the textbook, this is actually uh, those kinds of skills that we do in the class that they could take to work the next day and actually apply and, and make it relevant to their personal situations. And we do three of those within each content area uh, we give students an option to be able to come in on a Saturday or on a Friday evening or in an afternoon class and there's a lot of flexibility with that. But again, it's, it's the added dimension of the workplace opportunity but then taking these, these, these relevant content areas and applying it. The seminar content varies and what we try to do is also make it relevant to the student because we can say we want to talk to you about how to interview, for example, in specific context and have interview questions that we think are generic and, and appropriate. But then the students will say, hey, wait a minute, you know, when I was in this interview, they asked me this question, how do we deal with it? So what we end up doing is have an interaction, uh, a brainstorming session with every student in the class and saying how you would go about, how would you answer that and how would you do it? So it gives a, a, a lot more synergy to the process. And then it includes, again, that content that people are dealing with all the time. It's not, you know, some, some construct that you know, it was written in an academic journal someplace. It's actually hands-on. I think, too, that the content does focus on soft skills. In my role as Director of Workforce, I get to oversee cooperative education, but also workforce trainings and interact with many employers. And across the board, despite the industry, they share, please help develop soft skills. And we actually define what those soft skills are, about punctuality, communication skills, body language, and we administer a Myers-Briggs, we talk about personality inventories so that students, if they understand themselves and their strengths better, they can perform better in the workplace in advance. And we're often told by the students that they, this kind of content isn't gone over in other academic areas at the college. So we're very cognizant of even defining soft skills in the seminars to help students start thinking about that. And then as Paul shared, they interact with each other in the seminar to help develop those. 
Uh, I'm grateful the way it's structured here because we have faculty assigned to Cooperative Work Experience Education or Co-op Ed. Um, it's not as if it were in a department and it was a personal study course with one faculty member. We have faculty here that get to interact with our employer partners. The benefit, I believe, is then we can represent all of the CTE fields and disciplines when we go out and invite potential employers to advisory boards and offer the resources to CTE advisory boards rather than it being added load to a faculty member. Um, I believe too that the benefit is that it applies to all working students, not students in just career and technical education disciplines, but students who might be exploring a career opportunity. If they get an internship and they realize they, um, for labor law purposes, they should be enrolled in a program, we offer that program that adds student insurance and structure to the work experience, but is also a vehicle for students to maybe determine what they don't want to do. And that might fall out of their declared major, but I believe it's a useful exercise in terms of career advancement. Well, it, it, it happens in several different ways. A lot of times the students themselves come to us with an internship opportunity. They've been pursuing it, um, especially within this marketplace. The entertainment industry it, it uses a lot of interns, and so there's a network already established for those kinds of students who are pursuing entertainment communications and, and, and the like. There's other opportunities within this network, this this. CCN network that lists internship opportunities. Our community, the businesses within the community can go onto the network and start offering internship opportunities. And even with our contacts in business, I'll get an email saying, please send me some other students with this kind of background, with this credential. So in, in essence, it's, a, it's a, quite an eclectic approach to how these internships are, are evolving and there's really no one best way to, to go out and do that. And, and again, what we want to be able to do is to accommodate the students who come to us and say, you know, I've, I'm working with Universal Studios and I've got an internship opportunity and I need to get some credit for it. Then there's another one who'll come and say, can you help me find an internship opportunity? That's really not our role per se, but if we do know of situations, then we clearly present it. And, and we want them to be aware of it. You know. So again, it's a, it's a group, it's a team effort, if anything. So. Yeah, I believe our, our online career and job board is utilized to manage our contract between the employer and the student so that there's not a lot of paperwork going back and forth. It's an electronic contract um, which allows the employer to sign up and utilize the career board to advertise both job and internship opportunities. Uh, I think we feel this is a workforce and economic development resource for the community, so it's presented that way. So an internship might come about when the foundation executive director is speaking to board members about this resource and they come to Paul and I and say, how, how can we utilize it? And we share the requirements. Uh, we're very clear to share that according to labor law, an unpaid internship should be 70% educational which uh, means the student should have clear learning objectives that don't supplant a paid employee, um, and that the student would be covered by student insurance just for the term of the enrolled semester. And so a student can do cooperative education more than one semester, and if they choose to, um, we want to help with that, because sometimes a student will do two internships that will lead to a job placement, but every time they do it, they need to have new learning objectives which would be similar to new bullets on their resume. Uh, so we have developed some relationships with employers who continue, as Paul shared, to request interns and use our online job board. Uh, unfortunately, there are not as many cooperative work experience programs in greater Los Angeles as there could be. And so we get referrals from other college campuses as well. Other, if there are other community colleges that say, we, we have a student who got an internship, there's not a vehicle, we know about your program. We also get referrals from Cal State schools because in the Cal State system, the institution that's near us, um, students can get internship credit in their declared major their senior year, but savvy students realize that they should be doing multiple internship or work experience opportunities prior to graduation to position themselves for a higher paying career. 
Actually, I, I think we're the, probably the best kept secret on campus um, as far as letting more students know that, that this program exists. And when we do communicate that, and we go to classroom to classroom, we go visit, and, and there is a, a group of faculty that help promote uh, you know, the co-op program to their students within the class. And, you know, certain departments are more active than others. I mean, the business department is active because, again, you're hoping that your students can get out there and jump into the job market right away, so you want to prepare them. Uh, and then the other departments, uh, you know, will announce the program. And then again, we try a, as best we can to ensure that the employers also know that this program exists so that if they've got workers at, at their company and their part-time students that they can actually come and get credit you know again for this activity um, and and especially the disciplines uh, it's key that if you're in accounting that you're doing accounting work right now you should be able to get some credit for actual doing accounting work computer work and and those kinds of specific you know skill sets and you know we actively pursue it uh, in every area we can we tell the story we try to yeah, we try to, and we, we also, I visit counselors, because counselors are often the point of entry for a student, and so the counselors have our information and flyers, and if they find out a student's working and cooperative education might be a vehicle for them, it's often we get referrals directly from the counselor. That's because we went to a model where a student can enroll online, because we feel it's very important, the in-person meeting to establish the contract and the learning goals. Um, although it's labor intensive the first two weeks of the semester, it makes the rest of the semester go much smoother in terms of the arrangement with the employer, an understanding of what the program is and the expectations, uh, and for the benefit of the student. So our model is one of zero limit, which means a student is required to get an actual ad slip to add the course, which requires the student to fill out the application, meet with their employer, map out learning objectives, and then they meet with cooperative education faculty to ensure that they're measurable and transferable prior to enrollment. So as Paul shared, it, it does mean that every semester there's recruitment being done um, with our campus partners to students who might not know about it, um, but we feel it makes the whole semester go better when those protocols and agreements and contracts are in place prior to the start of the class. Well, there's, there's several components to it. Um, the actual employer provides an assessment uh, at the end of the semester. Um, we also follow up with a personal interview or a phone call. I will call the employer and speak directly to them to get some feedback on how the student has been doing in that, in that role. Uh, we then send out a checklist assessment uh, to determine at what level they've achieved their objectives, uh, and were they, you know, contributing overall? How, you know, what kind of uh, contribution did they make to the organization? Uh, the seminar session also counts uh, as part of an assessment. By attending the seminar, we also give them assignments. There are written academic requirements for each seminar, and those are graded, and we actually give them a letter grade in the class. So by a combination of the uh, employer's assessment and then the actual essays and or assignments that are turned in for each internship. And as Doug said, there are different expectations each time a student comes into the, to the program. And we hope to elevate those experiences and, and the assignments that are, are given for each semester uh, are based on this, this uh, progression of, of activity. So again, there's there's the, the employer's role is, is huge because they're the ones who see the, the intern or the, or the co-op student on a regular basis, so their assessment is weighed higher than the other aspects of it. But we try to take a, you know, a well-rounded approach to assessing how they, how they perform. Once the um, agreement is in place, it's the responsibility of the employer to check that they agree on these learning objectives and that they agree to their role in the partnership of cooperative education. So that's one of the um, items that's put in place up front. That plays an important role for an unpaid internship because often human resources at a large company or a small production house will ask for a letter of enrollment. We don't provide the letter of enrollment until the employer has agreed to the learning objectives and the structure of the program. 
They changed the language with our campus, I believe in 2010, where it was, it, in lieu of an in-person visit, it could be um, contact by, by phone. And so w the way we interpret that and apply that, um, if it's a new employer partner and a new student to our program, we often try to make the effort to go out and ensure that it's a, an appropriate learning environment to establish a partnership with an employer. If it's um, a place like I can think of a, a radio station that we work with quite a bit that we've been to many times, we don't feel the need to, to go out because we already have an established relationship. So we kind of determine that based on the student and the status of the employer. And uh, we're a little bit limited with faculty assignment to the program, so we try to balance it in the most appropriate way to benefit the students. I think the successes and the gratification would be here and the challenges here. Not to say that the challenges aren't real, but to feel like you've helped a student on a career pathway, secure a job, given them tools that might help them throughout their career about interviewing and resumes and networking and informational interviews. And the feedback we get is very gratifying. And I'm going to um, say it before you do. Doug has taught me that we transform lives. <laughs> And, and that's, I mean, it's almost a cliche, but it, it's something that I've adopted. And I said, you know what, every day I've helped somebody maybe transform their life. And that is priceless. I mean, you can't put a value uh, or any kind of, of, of nominal amount to that experience. And so I said it before you. Well, em employment is gratifying. It's an important role. People go to school and they go to university and they go to community college to get tools to help their career. And if we can streamline that and offer tools that help people get employment, that is very gratifying. So that's up here. A challenge is cooperative work experience is not part of required degree completion, certificate completion. So from an institutional level, it's challenging, I think, to institutionalize a, a program that isn't attached to those traditional metrics of success within the community college system. So it requires us to market it both internally amongst our campus and externally to our employer partners. I think that's a, an ongoing challenging, which uh, an ongoing challenge is marketing, both outside of the campus with the constraints we have on our time and assignments and internally. I would say that's a, that's a challenge. But the, the outcome, I think, and the successes are always there. Absolutely. I, I think what, what bothers me from a um, practical standpoint is, although we might see those qualitative successes, sometimes they're not captured within the metrics of our campus. So then we need to make the argument about why we think this is important to, to have and to continue to have on a community college campus. Well, part of my job as the executive director is going out into the community and educating folks about Valley College. Most of them are uh, companies, corporations, small businesses. And along the way, as I get to know uh, the folks in the community, they tell me, well, you know, I have an intern in my office. Um, I'm involved with such and such organization. And that provides an opportunity or a doorway, if you, if you will, to talk about cooperative education. And so I mentioned to them, well, if, you're, if your intern is working for you, are they getting college credit? And if not, you may want to look into our cooperative education program. And I get them in touch with uh, uh, Dr. Marriott here, uh, who oversees the cooperative education. So we have this great collaboration, not only with cooperative education, but with many different departments on, on campus. Uh, I guess you can say part of my job is connecting folks uh, and so uh, there are a number of occasions where I've had the opportunity to direct folks to cooperative education. And it's a win-win, I think, for, for everybody involved. It's, it's mutually beneficial for everybody, of course. When somebody inquires uh, about um, uh, internship and giving college credit to cooperative education, uh, it's a win for the student. The college is, uh, is, is proud to be assisting in that. Uh, it's good for my uh, foundation because uh, they build an affinity with the college and allows me to get them involved in other ways on our campus, perhaps serving on our foundation board of directors, 
leading to perhaps a scholarship that they may want to award to our students. So it's, it's a really terrific uh, collaboration and uh, cooperative <laughs> that we have going on here. So the Family Resource Center was started about 12 years ago to support the needs of families who are students at Los Angeles Valley College as well as the community who uses it to transition to, to go to college. We found that many of families' needs were not being met, even though we have a, a child development center. So we kind of fill in the gaps for people. The, we have a whole variety of services for families, and the way that we figured out to staff them is to work with our co-op ed department to have interns help out through with all of the activities that we provide. So one of the big things that we do are play groups between w that are attended with the families, the caregiver, the parent, the grandparent, maybe a babysitter and a young child, and we have co-op ed interns who help staff those. The reason that we like to work with co-op ed to do this is that the internships are very personalized and intentional in that we meet with each student beforehand, we figure out what their individual learning goals are, and we work with them to help them achieve those goals during the semester. We have a lot of students who end up wanting to repeat to do this experience again because they're so invested in it. And it's just really a win-win for both. So working at the Family Resource Center as a program coordinator, I operate under a grant through the LA County Probation Office for at-risk high school students, doing a career and college readiness kind of program, special program, after school, during lunch, at Grant High School in Panorama City High School. Uh, the benefit of working through these high schools is we get to offer them an internship on the college campus through the Family Resource Center, which is unique in that we get to partner with Co-op Ed, Cooperative Education, allowing us to give them unit-based college credit transferable units. The benefit of really having Cooperative Education attached to our internship, aside from the fact that they're getting college credit, is that it really allows me to individualize the internship the opportunity that they're fulfilling. For instance, if I have a student who's really interested in nursing, our internships are child development based, um, where they're working with children and families in our infant and toddler play groups. But for certain students, I've been able to kind of tweak their objectives to meet what kind of their job and career goals are. So if it's paperwork or working at our front desk, I'm able to kind of gear it towards that more um, if that is there their goals. What I think is really important about this aspect of sitting down with an employer to come up with three objectives to really have like meaningful work-based experience is that a lot of high school students don't really know what they want to do and sometimes they're doing internships because they think that's what they should do, um, which is great that they're being proactive and out there looking to get internship experience. but. You know, if they're not really taking anything away from it, what's the purpose of it, right? So they're setting goals, we're setting them together, we're thinking about what they really want to do. They're not doing it for the sake of doing it, they're doing it for an outcome. And I think that's really powerful. So I am currently a business marketing major and I had moved to California about a year and a half ago to pursue a career in music. I was offered an internship with uh, Spirit Music Group, which was in Hollywood. They initially uh, told me that they had no more slots open, so then they, um, uh, they referred me to another company. Who the company was, I wasn't sure. They didn't disclose that. Um, it was only until they CC'd me with the coordinator of the internship, and I, I scrolled down on the email, and I saw it was for Warner Music Group. Um, from there, I remember calling my mother saying, hey, I just, I just got this internship from Warner Music Group. And she said, well, son, I, usually typically they only offer internships for juniors and seniors. So I was a little discouraged. I wasn't sure, well, okay, because they don't, the internships today, they don't just let you volunteer. You need to have school credit. Um, so then I was living in Sherman Oaks, right down the street from Los Angeles Valley College. I simply went here because it was the only school closest to me to give it one try. This was my first attempt to speak to the internship coordinator. 
And I remember seeing Doug Marriott in the office and asking to speak to him. He usually doesn't even talk to anybody unless you have an appointment. But he heard me out and he pretty much, I told him I got an internship and I'm, I'm looking for a school to provide me with credit. He said, how did you know about our program? I had no idea what he was talking about. He said, yeah, we have a program called Co-op Ed and we pretty much provide students um, in, on the, uh, in the two-year college this opportunity to, to partic uh, participate in internships. From there, I felt like it was just like, wow, you know, and he got all the paperwork ready within a matter of weeks and I was able to partake in that internship. And my internship was in the A&R department, which stands for Artists and Repertoire. And a lot of things we do is we manage songwriters, artists, producers, pretty much anybody involved in the creation side. And I felt like that transition or translated perfectly in the business marketing field because that is exactly you know, what I'm out here to do at the moment. Um, from there, I was able to get another internship through a reference through Warner Brother Records. And then again, same thing, artists and repertoire, just trying to master the, the, the marketing, I'm trying to master marketing. And from there, I was offered another internship with Warner Music Group, and that's where I am today. Um, I just recently got my uh, first job offer for a company in Beijing, China. They're opening up an office in um, Pasadena, and they're creating a uh, music app, music-centric uh, uh, application and they're looking for somebody to work as an artist marketing manager. And I owe that all to Co-op Ed, which I would have never, they would have never even considered me had I not had those internships. Cooperative education program has been super beneficial for me. Um, when I came to Valley, I was a little lost, I guess you could say, because I had pursued a career in music for a long time and I didn't have a lot of success. So when I got here, I started to learn more about myself and wanted to discover different career options. So after taking a few classes, I decided that I kind of had an interest in environmental conservation. So I met Doug, who's the program director of cooperative education, and uh, he worked with me to uh, find Tree People, a nonprofit here in LA, and I was able to volunteer with them and earn college credit through the co-op ed program, which was great. And Part of my duties were to uh, be a supervisor. I was a volunteer supervisor in the Santa Monica Mountains where I would lead a team of volunteers and I would show them proper techniques and how to conserve native, um, native plants and how to just work as a team to do envir environmental conservation. And I learned that I really liked to help people and I liked to coach them and I thought that I might enjoy a uh, teaching career but I didn't really pursue it too much. So I stayed in the cooperative education program and what was great about it was the workshops and the classes that Doug put on and he gave me tools on how to develop a really good resume, how to dress for job interviews and to just present myself professionally in a professional environment. And after applying those skill sets, I was able to pretty much land any job that I interviewed for. And one of those was an internship at a company called Happy Earth, which was environmental landscaping. Kind of in the same vein, not related to music, but still envir environmental conservation, but it was a very corporate type environment. I was in a big building in Santa Monica, and although the company had good intentions, I really missed that interaction with helping people and teaching and coaching, and I wanted to get that back. So through Co-op Ed, I kind of learned what I wanted to do, but I also learned what I didn't want to do. And then after I finished the co-op ed program, I left that internship and I started applying for teaching jobs. And thankfully now I teach full time at a music school. So I still get to draw from my experience as a musician and I get to share my, my talents and my skills with other people who want to express themselves through multiple instruments. And I'm still a full time student. I'll transfer um, this fall to a four year university and I, I just can't say enough about the cooperative education program and how it's helped me to discover what I love to do and what I'm good at, which is teaching music. So I'm a um, major early childhood education major here at LA Valley College. And uh, last semester I was an intern at the Family Resource Center where it was a it was a wonderful, unique opportunity, and I'm really glad I did it. I was able to 
work in the uh, family uh, play group um, at the uh, FRC is what we call it here. And it really gave me hands-on, real-world uh, opportunity to know what it's like to work in a child development center or a, a daycare center. It taught us how to uh, interact with the parents, how to um, uh, build a, and structure a curriculum, um, how to uh, work with the children on many different levels. It was uh, really educational. I would say that I benefited from the internship because it was so realistic that I was able to decide, hey, do I really want to continue uh, down this path or do I want to do something else? And what I learned, my personal experiences, I, I loved working with the kids and but at the end, I said, hmm, I'm not really sure if this is uh, what I want to do. I know I want to teach, um, be a part of my community. I just don't know in what capacity or if it's uh, early childhood education. So thankfully, I had that opportunity to intern um, so that I would know that. Another thing that's very helpful are the seminars that we get to attend. We have one that's on career building. Um, that's very helpful for me and for those who think that uh, teaching is just in the classroom, it, it isn't. And there's so many different ways that I could use my um, education um, in the community. So it, it brought that out. Uh, it helped us with our resume building and cover letter, which is really, really important when you're trying to compete in the workplace. So they were very helpful. It's an ongoing um, program they have. Uh, it allows you to set goals for yourself from two to five to ten year goals and it makes you be accountable for those goals. So um, I got a lot of real life experience working um, as an intern last semester.